Okay, so this is the Jupyter interface, but how do we go about starting with our first Jupyter notebook? Um, first, you navigate to where you want your first Jupyter notebook to live. Yes, you can access my desktop. Um, so what I do next is I say a new notebook with Python 3. And that creates my first ever notebook. Yay! <laughs> So you can, uh, here is the name, you can edit the name here, you know, you can say my first Jupyter Notebook. It's a pretty lame name, I know. I feel like in every technology class they name things as like my first something something, but uh, I really can't come up with anything more creative right now. <laughs> okay, so let me just show you around a little bit. So this is called a cell. And you can type things in here, for example, a equals three. And then I say, what is a? It says three. You know, the outputs you see this way. Um, it will display all the outputs of whatever you're running. Um, one thing to know is to run a um, cell, you can click it, make sure it's selected and then say run. But another way to do this is also shift and enter, and then it will also run. Uh, you see, maybe you realize that right now, this cell is selected as blue, but when I select this one, it's green. So it's not a difference between the cells. When a cell is uh, only selected, like it is right now, it is shown in blue, but it is in edit mode. So if I click this again, it gets into edit mode. Now I can write things in here. That's why it's um, in green then. So to add new cells, you can basically run something and as you run, it will create more cells. Or, let me delete these. So this is cut. <laughs> and uh, you can also click this little plus sign here to create new cells. At the same time, this is something I actually learned last year, which really excited me. When a cell is only selected, so it shows you the blue uh, color, then you can press A, which will create cells on top of it. Well, maybe if I write something here, it will make more sense. Hello. So if I run this, so I, uh, the cell is selected. If I press A, it creates cells on top of the cell that you selected. And in the same way, if you press B, it creates cells below the cell that you got selected. So I think that's pretty nifty. If you want to delete cells, then you can use this cut uh, button over here. And then you will just be cutting them like this. So because you're cutting them, let's, let me make this a uh, proper thing. Hi, I'm really enjoying this course and I'm not biased. <laughs> okay, let's say this is the one and I cut this guy. So it's effectively deleted. You can just go on with your life and act like that never existed, but you can also do this, edit paste cells below. So this cut um, symbol here, it basically it's kind of like a, you know, copy and paste and cut and paste sort of thing. You're cutting it, it's still in memory, you can paste it somewhere. And sometimes I use it when I want to um, copy a couple of cells. And that's how you can do this. If they're selected in blue, then you can hold shift and, you know, select all the ones that you want. And go here and copy them. You can use the options here. You can copy them, you can cut them, let's copy them. And then you can paste them below. And then you will have them again. So when you're working with a very long um, notebook, sometimes it's very useful to, you know, be able to cut and copy some cells from somewhere, a couple of them, and then paste them somewhere else. I think that will be very useful for us in the coming lessons. So let me clean this up a little bit. Also, if you accidentally delete something, let's say I delete this one and then I'm like, oh no, I actually did want to print one after another. What I can do is come here on edit and say undo delete cell and then it will undo the last cell that you deleted. Um, so you might have realized that there are these little numbers 
right next to the cell. So if I run this again, it becomes 10. If I run it again, it's 11. It's basically keeping track, uh, track of when did you run this cell latest. If I run it again, so if latest I ran this three times before the first one, run it again, it's 12. So I use this to basically realize, okay, if I, if I have, again, a very long notebook and I'm trying to decide, you know, okay, what did I run so far? Uh, you can see that, okay, I maybe missed this one and I need to run this one now. You know, it's, it's kind of a way of keeping track of understanding what you last run because sometimes, you know, what I do is I am working on, let's say, on the 70th line and I go back all the way to the top and change something. And while I'm running everything, maybe I skip something or the skip the one that's like right before the one that I want to run. So then if something breaks and I can understand, oh, wait a minute, I didn't run the one right before this one. So that's why it's giving me an error or that's why there's a problem. Um, it's just a nice way of keeping track of, you know, where you are in your notebook. So yeah, this is how we basically write our code and like add new cells, run the cells, change cells, locations. There is one other thing that I think is very useful to use. It's not related to coding directly, but it's called Markdown. So when you see here, when the cell is selected, I can change what type of cell this is. So normally when we're writing Python code, it's going to be code. But if you want to note something down or create headli headlines, then we will be using Markdown. So let me show you how that works. Then let me say, this project is awesome. Now I have a headline. If you want a smaller headline, then I can say, I'm learning so much. So if I run this like this, it is still in the code type. So that's why Python thinks that, thinks that this is just a comment. That's why I changed the type here. And now it's a smaller headline. So basically markdown headlines go until, uh, yeah, I think it's until fifth or sixth, then you can still write, you know, whatever you want to do. You can also take notes, you know, you can say I'm learning so much because this and that. And you can also say, let me put it in a list and then you can make a list, this and that, right? And this is what it will look like. It will look very nice and very put together. So if you wanna share some information about your work at the beginning of your um, notebook, then you can put it here. One other way of using this is to kind of create a navigation system in your notebook. So let me show you here. So this is kind of the skeleton that I have for every project. As you can see, we have the table of contents here. So, you know, more or less in every project, I know I'm going to import libraries, import the data, do data exploration, cleaning preparation, and then benchmark, create a benchmark model, do a feature engineering, model training. You can even, you know, have a sub, a sub list where you say, okay, I'm going to use this algorithm and then this algorithm, and I'm, I'm going to compare them. You can have a tuning and actually, these are even clickable. So if you want to say, okay, take me to feature engineering, it will take you to feature engineering. And then you can put other links here that will bring you back to the top, to the table of contents. So this is very useful if you want to make your notebook usable for other people. If you want to include this in your um, portfolio for people to look around and poke around and really understand what's happening easier. So, you know, you can note down, you can ha also have some notes about, you know, what's happening in this section, you can be like, in this section, I import all the data that I need. And then it will look like this. So you can give like a summary of what you're going to do here. This might look very trivial, but this is very important, especially after you start doing things, you'll probably realize that your notebook will easily get out of hand because you will import it here, do something to it here, realize that you did something wrong, and then write some more code below it to change it. And then before you know it, you know, you have code that's like not in a certain order. So I think it's a good idea to already have sections in the beginning. You don't have to perfectly follow the sections. Obviously you don't have to be like, oh no, no, no. I wrote it down importing data, but it's actually data exploration. You know, you can, you can change it later, but this will at least 
will force you a little bit to put things in the right place. You don't have to stress about it, but like it will help you create a good and quality notebook at the end. It will make your job easier. And yeah, and this is Markdown. And with this, we can wrap up our Jupyter Notebook tour. I will share this skeleton with you so you can poke around, see how you can create clickable links, you can see how you can create this. You can even use this one if you like. Uh, this is in the exact structure that we have in the course. And yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and start our project. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is actually an excerpt from my course, Hands-On Data Science Complete Your First Portfolio Project. It is, as you can understand from the name, a project course where we start all the way from beginning to setting up your data science environment. That's where this video is from. And also gathering data, using this data to um, cleaning it, preparing it and using it to create some, uh, train some machine learning algorithms and also preparing a presentable uh, GitHub repository for your data. So if you're interested, I will leave a link below this video uh, so that you can reach it and read more about it. and. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you around.